Hi, I'm Josh, and today we're going to be putting a rear rack on our Coleman CT200U mini bike. Now, they've released several different versions of the Coleman CT200U, a lot of different colors, and uh, some of them have front racks, some of them come with rear racks. But uh, if you're like me and yours didn't come with either, you're going to have to order some from the factory. There's the rear rack. We got it directly from the Coleman site. I've already kind of put it together. One thing they don't tell you, though, which you ought to know, is that there's a longer axle for this that uh, accommodates the rack. The uh, stock axle, if yours didn't come with a rack, will not accept this rack. So when you order your rear rack, make sure you get uh, the longer axle and two of these little spacers, the same kind that come on it uh, to begin with. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting around for like two weeks waiting for the axle to show up after your rack already showed up and being kind of pissed that you can't move forward on this thing. Now, if we were any kind of responsible adult, we'd unhook this brake drum, take the uh, chain tensioner off of it, remove the chain, all that stuff, get this wheel completely off, and then reassemble the whole thing with the new axle. If we was a responsible adult. What we're going to do is just use the new axle to pound the old axle out since the holes are the same size and uh, try to leave everything on. Now, on second look, we are probably going to have to take the chain off to do this, at least the rear chain. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is loosen up our chain tensioner here so it's not super tight when we take it off. And those just come off with a 10 millimeter socket. If you can find yours, mine always seem to fucking come up missing. But, you know, you don't have to even take them all the way off. Just get it loose enough to where you can mess with the chain. That should be okay. Uh, that probably gives us enough wiggle room to get the chain off there. All right, your chain guard comes off again with a 10 millimeter socket. You gotta be careful with these because it's uh, bolts directed wel or welded directly onto the frame. Try not, really try not to strip these if you can help it. There we go. There's that one off. And this will also give us a good opportunity to oil our chain since we've got it off because I'm sure it needs it. Come on, you stubborn sucker. Yeah, lock tight all these bolts just because they have a habit of popping off when you're bouncing down the road. All right, that's got our chain guard off. All right, now that you've got your clutch cover popped off, which by the way, it makes a handy receptacle for all them bolts and clips you're probably gonna lose, we gotta take our chain off. The way you do this is you gotta find this master link that has the clip on it. And the best way I've found to get these off is just prop a flathead screwdriver up against it. That should come right off. There she is, make sure you don't lose that. They're tough to find in a driveway. From there, Pop that last link off. We might have to loosen that chain tensioner up a little more. That is still really tight. Or maybe our chain's just all rusted up. That's uh, a good opportunity to oil, to oil our chain while we've got it off of here. But yeah, not much to getting the chain off. Kind of just like any bike chain. All right, with the chain popped off, we're gonna wanna now loosen our axle bolt. Oh, wrong way. This shouldn't be too bad. We should be able to, uh, if I'm correct, just line this new axle up with all the uh, hardware on the old one. And just kind of pound it through, putting the new stuff on kind of as we go. So what we're gonna want on the outside of this is one of these spacers, and then you'd put the strut for the, uh, for the rear rack would go over top of that. Kind of like that. We're gonna have to play with it a little bit, of course. Yeah. I think we can hammer an axle right in there. All right, this axle's been laying around my garage for a while, and it's gonna get a little gunk build up on it, so in order to make it easily poundable through the brake drum and all that, we're just gonna take some 1500 grit sandpaper to it, kind of clean it up a little bit, and then hit it with some WD-40. I usually have some grease around here, but I can't find any, so, you know. WD-40 always works in a pinch. 
You really should be taking the whole mechanism off and rebuilding it from scratch, but you know, it's a toy. Half the fun of having toys is busting them up and fucking with them and breaking them. It's a good thing. All right, that's pretty clean. Let's wipe it off with our handy shop rag. A little lube to smooth her way. All right. Uh, get ready to pound it in, Daddy. All right, let's waste no time getting this thing in. Is it going? Yeah, it's going. This is one of those ideas where I can't tell if it's incredibly stupid or incredibly brilliant. Sorry. Yep, this thing sure is coming out the other side, isn't it? Wonderful. But you see what we've done here? We've kind of lined, you know, we're putting on stuff as we go. We get to the other side here. Before the uh, end comes out here, we're gonna have to drop that other spacer on it, kinda as it comes. I'll spare you five minutes of me banging on this axle with a hammer and uh, we'll be back to you once it comes out the other side. All right, well, remember what I said earlier about this being a genius solution or a stupid solution? In pounding that through, we have knocked our wheel bearing out. So we're gonna have to stick this uh, extension on here and try to pound this sucker back in. But I guess that's worth knowing, since it's one of the things that could go wrong. Oh, this may take some redneck ingenuity to get that bearing back in. We'll be back once it's uh, where it should be. You know, my eighth grade shop teacher, Mr. Weaver, once said, he said, Mr. Shahan, I believe you'd work for six hours to get out of one hour of work. And he may have been right, because pounding that bearing back in was a pain in the ass and now I'm gonna constantly worry about it failing on me. But we did get the axle through the other side. Hopefully all this kind of tightens up. I hope we didn't bend our frame fucking with that. Let's crank her back on and see. Ah, before we do anything, we're gonna need to get some Loctite. If there's one bolt on this thing I do not want kicking loose, it is the axle bolt, especially with that New development of having a uh, kind of iffy bearing on there. But that's my fault. If it throws me on my face, I was kind of asking for it. All right, before we cinch this down, let's get our upper hardware done here just in case it doesn't move when we cinch this axle down. It bolts right to the top there. Even the, even the frames that didn't come with it are drilled for it, so no need to worry about that. There we go. Maybe. Ah, there she goes. All right. We'll get all that cinched down. Be back here in just a second. Okay. Well, it's on. The axle's all Loctited, and we're ready to reassemble everything and put it back together and see how bad we messed it up. Okay. We got our chain all nice and oiled while we had it off there. And we put it back on pretty much the same way we took it off, just backwards. Add that. Now this master link, I like to make it to where the back end is facing this way. Oh wait, no, the chain will be going that way. So, less likely to get knocked off. And once it's sitting there like that, you can usually just tap it with a screwdriver like you got it off. Well, not like that. No, no, it should go the other way. I'm wrong. There we go. All right. I'm sitting at an odd angle. There, it started. Ah, damn this thing. 
in the butt. It's not having any luck today, man. Thought this would be an easy project. It turned out to be a bigger pain in the butt than it ever had any business being. All right, there's our master link back on. All right, be back whenever we throw. We're just gonna throw our chain guard and our uh, clutch cover back on real quick. Okay, we've got our chain guard and our uh, clutch cover back on. Oh, that's all that's left to do. Set our chain to the proper tension. And a lot of people get real, you know, accurate with this. They'll measure the threads on the chain tensioner on each side. I've never had any luck with that. You just kind of eyeball it until it looks right and rod it until it feels right, you know? I don't know that there's a better way to do it. All right, let's have a look here. See if everything looks like it lines up. I might need a little more on that side. Nope, 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 we were wrong. Okay. Let's see. That looks about right. We'll take it for a test drive and try it out. I'm kind of worried about that bearing. I wonder if we didn't uh, make a big mistake here, but we'll find out. Okay, we're gonna take this thing for a quick ride down the street and around the yard just to make sure that uh, that bearing stays put. And we're gonna do it in shorts and flip-flops because uh, we stand by our work. So good. We didn't mess up the brakes. Okay, seems like it's all right. Uh, back tire seems like it's a little off balance, but uh, we could probably fix that by fucking with the chain tensioner. Yeah, you know, that's to be expected after doing something like this, but I really like this back rack. I, I mean, it's, it's uh, wow, thing is sturdy. Yeah, we'll put coolers and gas cans and you know, rifles and everything else on that sucker. So, uh, success, question mark? We'll see if that bearing holds out, but uh, yeah. We set out to put a rear rack on it. I guess the rear rack is on it, so uh, mission accomplished, question mark. 